Alright, so I've added a few things to Spring Thing recently, um, and I figured I'd, I'd go through it just to, to show you the new capabilities. Um, so uh, this is the, just the default screen that you see. You know, you can play play around with the with the default mesh. Um, just a few commands that I've added. Uh, one is follow, and that'll keep the mesh centered on the screen and scale it automatically. So if you free it with free, um, and then you try dragging it around, it'll actually just be followed. So right now we're flying through space with this uh, blob, uh, and it's automatically being scaled. So we'll never lose it, even if it diverges. Um, so if you really tweak the mesh, it'll start going crazy and just flip off the screen. But it'll follow it for a while before it dies. Alright, so um, so let me just uh, go through the mouse selection stuff. OM2, I'm going to create a new mesh. So ordered mesh 2, OM2, and then 50, which is the number of elements per side of the screen. So it'll be a 50 by 50 grid and connect it with 8 connections per element. expect that one. I guess that's follow being bad. So I'll turn off follow. Clear that mesh which is obliterated itself. Um, OM2 50 8. Okay. So now I've got a regular grid here. Oh, it's paused though. Unpause it with B. And uh, I've added damping, so that's D, let's say D10, uh, that slows it down pretty quickly, not quite as exciting. Uh, D1 is good because it adds some stability without really taking away from the mobility of the mesh. So. Mm, Oh yeah, multi-select. So if you hold down shift and drag, there's a selection box, and when you let go it selects by making the connections bold. If you have elements on with E, you can see that the selected ones are filled uh, circles and the unselected ones aren't. You can't really see it at this resolution though of video. So. Um, so here I've got some selected elements. You can see that if I drag them, if I select one of the elements that have been selected and drag it around, it, the whole group moves as a rigid body, so you can use this as a handle uh, to, for example, move the entire side of a mesh. So if I just select a row down the side here, I want to use them as a handle. I can use them as a handle to shake and grab the mesh. I'm going to turn off the force vectors with F. And I'm going to grab those same group of elements down the side here. So you can see that I can grab a row and just drag drag around. So you can also multi-select uh, a group of elements and apply attributes to them like stiffness so and mass. So I'm going to, I think the default's like 10 for mass. So I'm going to do M20 twice as massic twice as dense, and K20,000 newton per meter, which is newton per pixel actually. So so now it's stiffer and it's more massive. So if I pass a wave through it, it just behaves differently. I think, um, I think if it was... You could change the wave speed by, let's see, um, by changing the mass and stiffness in a non-proportional way. So if I said mass as 10 so that the mass is the same across the density change and I pass a pressure wave over it, yeah, see how it moves faster through the uh, 
stiffer portion. So the wave speed is faster through the, the stiffer portion that we've created. So if you want to unselect, you can just drag select off any elements. Um, and uh, so if you want to fix, if you want to add constraints, you can select some elements here and type in fix. And that'll just fix those elements. You can drag them around as you would have before. But they'll just stay there because they're fixed. You can also fix in X or Y. So if we fix in in Y, which is the vertical direction, fix Y. So now you can see that all these elements, they can only move in X, which is the horizontal direction. And if I go down here and fix these guys in X, fix X, those guys can only move in the vertical direction. So there are sliders. So fix, fix X, and fix Y. You can uh, selectively ap apply restraints. If you want to remove restraints from a selected portion of the mesh, just select it and then type in free. If the none are selected, then it'll free the whole mesh. Um, and let's see. I've also added uh, contact elements, so they're only active in compression. So um, let me just set this up so it's in tension. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select these guys over here and say fix um, fix X. Well I just said fix I guess. That'll do. And then I'm gonna drag them this way to set up some tension between these two sets of constraints. So I'm gonna drag select these guys and drag them to the left here. Okay, so now we've got this big tension field. Um, to stabilize it, I'm going to add some damping, so D10, after deselecting elements. So, if you don't have any elements selected, your operations apply to the whole mesh. If you have selected elements, uh, typically they'll apply to the selected element set. Um, okay. It looks like there's some unstable oscillation there still. I'm going to type in D100 to really just damp it out. Um, and then I'm going to turn some of these elements in here into contact elements so that they will effectively disappear because they're in tension except for the transverse direction. So I selected them and I'm going to type in CTC which is for contact or you can type in contact and you can see that the mesh breaks apart as the load path is removed. Um, if you want to turn them back from contact elements into normal elements, just type in NCTC or no contact and they'll resume their shape. So that's just a brief overview of, of recent changes um, and I'll be adding stuff as time goes by. Okay, well, enjoy.